Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to make shaker style MDF panel doors the easy way and also the easiest way. They're both coming up next. And welcome back. Now let's be clear, panel doors like this have been around long before the shakers got their hands on them. We call them shaker style panel doors because you know exactly what we mean, a plain panel set into an equally plain frame. The frame's made in four parts. These longer pieces at either side are called styles, and the shorter pieces that connect them are called rails. And the way I like to make them is to run a groove the full length of the styles and around three edges of the rails, then you can just slot the panel into the groove. Where the rails butt up against the styles, those grooves in either side create a mortise where we can glue in what's called a loose tenon made out of small offcuts of the panel material. You know, in my 20 odd years in the business, I've made literally thousands of doors for cabinets and wardrobes using every method you can imagine. And this loose tenon method is hands down my favorite way of doing it. Five separate pieces plus some loose tenons made from scrap, add in a bit of glue, a couple of clamps, and you've got a door that's light and strong and is very quick and easy to make. In fact, let's make one now and I'll talk you through it in a bit more detail. This is a painted door, so I'm using MR or moisture resistant MDF throughout because it's a much better quality board and it takes paint really well. If you're not familiar with it, then it really is worth searching out. And here I've got a 22 mil thick board that's about seven eighths of an inch and I've ripped 80 millimeter strips that's about three and a quarter inches for the rails and styles. I've cut the styles to length, that's just the height of the door, and I can mark the length of the rails easily just by butting them up against the styles and marking off the door width. With the rails and styles cut to size, the next thing on the list is to cut the groove to accept the panel. And the safest way to do this is, is with a slot cutter or grooving bit like this one in a router table. Now I don't have space for a separate router table, so I've got a big old Triton router slung under my bench here with a homemade fence that clamps down through slots in the bench top. It's all a bit Heath Robinson, but it works just fine. Here I'm setting the height of the quarter inch cutter to just below half the material thickness. And with the router locked down, I can run the grooves along the length of the rails and styles. And then along the ends of the rails, using a simple sled to keep everything square. Earlier on, when I cut the 6mm MR MDF for the panel, I made it a couple of millimetres under size just to make life a little bit easier for myself when it comes to the glue up. And with our loose tenons cut and ready, we can make a start at getting this put together. Now, I live in Britain where we don't really get extremes of temperature or humidity, and this door is going to be made entirely from the same material from MR MDF and I know it'll be exceptionally stable, so I'll be simply gluing the whole thing together. But if you have any concerns about the stability of the materials you're using where you live, then I'd always recommend running a test first before committing to a full set of doors for your kitchen. So with the rails and styles all good to go, I can run a bead of glue along the groove in the style. Then slot in the panel. and then add the rails, paying particular attention to where the ends butt against the styles. That quarter inch groove takes the 6mm panel comfortably and it gives us a little bit of useful wiggle room to get things lined up. And finally, I'll add in the other style. With plenty of glue on both sides of the loose tenons, I can push them into the mortises, brushing out any glue squeeze as we go. Before getting it into clamps, and checking for square before nipping them up tightly. Once set, we can scrape any dried glue off the face of the door before trimming off the excess or horns from the loose tenons. 
and then give the whole door a quick sanding over the face and the edges. Now that is a quick and easy way to make a plain panel door, a shaker style door if you like, just like this one. But you might be thinking, well that's all very well, you've got a full workshop full of gear. I don't have a router, let alone a router table, all I've got is a saw. Isn't there an easier way? Well, yes there is. You can make a mock panel door that doesn't require a router at all. In fact, let's make one of those next. So I'm starting with a 12mm or half inch MRMDF backing board that's cut to the right size for our door and I've cut strips of 6mm MRMDF for our mock rails and styles. I've laid them onto the door and I'm just putting a pencil mark on the inside edge. Now it's worth mentioning that a 6mm rail over a 12mm backer like this is fine for a small door like this one but for anything bigger I'd recommend using 9mm for the strips or 15mm for the backer just to give a bit more weight, a bit more heft to the door. I'm using a fast grab PVA to glue these strips down and I'll apply it with a foam roller to get a nice thin even covering. I don't want to get too much glue on the visible parts of the backer board so I'm staying inside the pencil marks that we made earlier. With the glue on both the backer and the strips, and again paying particular attention to the ends of the rails where they butt against the styles, I'm pressing down the rails and styles carefully as they can be a little bit swimmy, a little bit squirrely when the glue is wet. If you have one then this is a good place to use a headless nailer to keep those strips in place as those tiny little pinpricks they leave behind can be easily filled. I've made the rails a little oversized so all the strips overhang the backing board slightly and when I'm happy that everything's in place I just pull the styles and rails together tightly with some tape then put another board over the face of the door and weigh it all down with whatever I've got to hand a couple of paint pots in this case when the glue's set I can pull off the tape and trim the door to size and then give the whole thing a light sanding. You might need to add a little bit of filler around the joins and at the edges as you can sometimes see the two thicknesses of materials depending on how heavy those paint pots were. Or you could always go the extra mile and edge band the door with a paintable tape so you're sure you'll never see that split edge. So this is almost certainly the easiest way to make a panel door or a mock panel door or a shaker style door or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the same thickness as the loose tenon door, it will be a little bit heavier but probably no stronger although it does require the least equipment obviously and to be perfectly honest I made plenty of doors that way when I was first starting out. I made a video way back about why I don't make them that way anymore though so feel free to go and check that out, there's a link down in the video description. I still prefer the loose tenon method personally but remember whatever works for you is whatever works best. Be sure to let me know down in the comments below if you think you have an easier or better way to make these shaker style panel doors as we'd all like to benefit from your experience. One more quick tip before I go, if you are making panel doors using the loose tenon method, when you have the router set up to groove the rails and styles, it's a good idea to run a spare piece of material through there to use that as a template. If you mark it up with the material thickness and groove size it makes setting up the router much easier next time. Uh, that's it for this video though, I hope you've enjoyed it, Oops. Uh, thanks for watching, uh, don't forget to subscribe for more weekly workshop videos or come and join the Patreon party for additional exclusive content over at patreon.com forward slash 10 minute workshop and thanks so much to everyone who does just that. But that's it for this week, thanks again for watching, I'll see you next time, take care.